Brad. I'm John. <laughs> so, we're going to go back to Ready for History. Pretty sure this was Ready for History. And everyday items that have changed. Time has moved on, items have evolved. <laughs> yeah. They, they have grown. Thankfully. <laughs> uh, not always. Not always. Well, that's true. There's, there was a. But judging by this first picture, I <laughs> depends on purpose and use. Mm. Um, that does depends on purpose and use. Depends on what you're doing. Not from what it used to be. Well, mm, mm, yeah. yeah. So anyway. Okay. <laughs> so what is what do you say? Right for history, and you already named the thing. All right. Yes. Well, before we go, make sure you hit that like and subscribe. You can hit. Uh, Note one thing. Check out the description down below. And you're going to find a link to the video we're about to watch and the channel that it comes from, which I already mentioned. Yeah. And if you hit mm, drop <sighs> construction, <laughs> if you hit more in the description, then you'll find a whole bunch of other information, links, and stuff that is down there as well. And we also have the AC running, so let us know if it's yes too much of a noise in the background. It, look, I should have it kind of sort of tuned out. It's Hopefully it is. It's starting to get hot in Texas, so... <laughs> starting? Well, it's, it's already a really bad. <laughs> it's hot, hot and humid. It's, so. it's either pleasant or it's hot. Yeah. We're, in, we're now in the hot and humid part of the year. Hot, humid, and mosquito-infested. So, well, that's too. Gotta love Texas. State so birds. Say. <laughs> yeah. State birds. They're, they're not that small. They go... Anyway, yeah. bye. There are many things that we use or do today, and we never really think about how it used to be. See? Some things you might be surprised on how it was done, while others might surprise you how long they've been around. In today's video, we'll have a look back at some of these items and just see how far we've really come. Television in the 1960s was groundbreaking, but there was one problem, which was reception. Homes never had any TV aerials installed, so that is where rabbit ear antennas came into play. If you have ever used one of these, then you know how much of a pain they are. Many people had to play around with the antennas to get them just right in order to get a signal. We're I lucky that I've technology like that. has advanced since then, and we no longer have to use these rabbit ear antennas. Although, saying that, um, as more and more people are, you know, Cutting cables and stuff. Weirdly enough, variations upon this theme are actually coming back. I mean, sure, some of the digital antennas are literally just kind of like a sticky back thing, square that you just kind of like throw on a window. Right. Um, but we actually have one that actually does have a pair of antennas on it. Well, then we also extent. have one that we have on a pull out side. Yes, too. we actually have an antenna because we don't have we don't have cable here, no. so we can if we don't live. That that's yeah, well, well, <laughs> that role of an area, but it's just so expensive nowadays, yeah. and we just don't watch. We live in the county. TV. Admittedly, in the county is approximately one hundred feet from the uh, <laughs> city limit. Line. Yeah, there's the, no the, the actual street is in city limits. Yeah, the actual <laughs> street out front is in city limits, but our house is not. Yeah. Um, but Which is kind of good because unrestricted areas. So. Yes, for <laughs> unrestricted <laughs> areas. So anyway. If you wanted to have toast in the 1920s, then it had to be manually flipped in order to have both sides toasted. This contraption is what was used, and it sort of looks like a jail for bread. At the time, it yeah, would have been classy, but like it really that. was impractical, and certainly isn't safe now. Basically like that, or similar. Yeah. I will admit, I want to get one of these, fix it up, and use it, simply because I think they look cool. Yeah, there's, there's a certain retro coolness to them. Yeah. And you have more control. You know, you can see what your bread is doing as yeah. opposed to the modern ones. I'll put the bread in, clunk, it's gone. Until the smoke comes out of it. Yeah. In the That's early done. 1900s, beard trimming wasn't anywhere near what it is now. These beard trimmers look extremely sharp, which probably made them extremely effective as well. However, they also look like they could really nick you or even take off part of your ear. I don't think anyone will be switching from the electric beard trimmers anytime soon. I would soon. think it would pull the hair. Uh, but when you stop to think about it, though, it's simply a manual version of the electric beard trimmers. Yeah, but to me, it's like you're not, then, you're I mean, not going fast yeah, enough. I would think it would pull. 
But that maybe, maybe that's why but people then, had so many beards back well, yeah, then. But then maybe not, because it's kind of like, you know, scissors. Scissors don't really pull, you know, if you have to trim the odd bit, you'll sit there and just go... I guess that's um, true. So, I mean, if it's sharp enough, then... And honestly, you can cut yourself with the electric ones. Been there, seen it, done it, hurts. <laughs> yeah. Fire grenades were the original fire extinguishers that were thrown into fires to help suppress the flames. They were popular between the 1870s and 1900s, but modern fire extinguishers have rendered them obsolete. At the time, it was a very different way to help stop the growth of a fire. Inside of the glass bottle was carbon tetrachloride to help combat small fires. Once the glass broke, the fluid inside would smother the flames. Actually, things like that have made a comeback. I've, I've seen on my social media, yeah. so you throw it in the fire. And... Var- variation. Well, yeah. Let's go with let's go with the word safer in well, flying yeah. inverted commas. Variation of it. We actually found a couple of those in a house we remodeled years ago. Yeah. Um, they were the violently unsafe variety from the 1900s. Yeah. I don't actually know whatever happened to those. Yeah. They, we, I think we were going to donate them to a museum and they didn't want them. Could be. Or something. So I don't know what we ended up yeah, doing. What happened to them in the end? <laughs> This is a recipe that dates back to 3000 BC and it is from ancient Mesopotamia. If you saw this recipe, you would probably have no clue how to do it, much less what it was for. This slab shows you how to make your very strong type of Sumerian beer. It is certainly easier to head to the convenience store now. I would actually like a translation of that for... It's one of those weird things. It's kind of like I'd like a translation of that. I don't like beer, but I'd like a translation of it. So, you you know, you could actually try it and it's kind of like, oh yeah, this is a recipe for, you know, have the friends over. Here you go. Yeah, this is a recipe I got. How old is it? Um, uh, about 5,000 years or so. I don't know. It's old, you know. Take a look at these slick sunglasses. They are some of the first sunglasses and were made 4,000 years ago. These sunglasses were meant to protect the eyes from UV light and snow blindness. They were created out of flattened walrus ivory with small slits to minimize the amount of light entering through. But don't look for these to come back in style anytime soon because they aren't the easiest to see through. I do that when um, I go outside without sunglasses too bright. I'll go like this. Safety squints. You know, it's just like... Safety squints. I need to have my sunglasses on my outside because my eyes are it's too. The, it's the original safety squint. Yeah. Um, they, the thing is, they they worked, and yeah, honestly, modern snow glasses are kind of in a way a variation on the theme, although the lenses obviously are a lot better because those didn't actually have lenses. Mm-hmm. So, wishing trees were once the original wishing well. I'm sure most <laughs> people have thrown a coin into a fountain at some point and made a wish. Trees such as this one were used in a similar way for wishes. Instead of throwing coins into the water, they would place them into the tree trunk. As time went on, the trees would grow over the coins, keeping them nice and safe. Hmm. Let's just hope these people's wishes came true. Yeah, never heard of that. That actually is a British picture, by the looks of it, because I can see a two pence piece there and a British penny. And there's a with the queen's head on it and there's a 10p right there yeah so that's actually a british picture so hey hey. (laughs) we're bringing in the other side of the ocean for change vending machines were an invention that changed the game of selling goods the very first vending machines were created in england during the 1800s and they look nothing (laughs) like what we see today we have you to blame they were coin operated machines that spit out fruit I've actually seen one of those in a uh, history museum in London, hmm. that fruit fruit machine. They actually had a working one. I forget which museum it was, but I've literally seen one of those. <clears throat> Sorry. Today, vending machines dispense all sorts of goods. Not only that, but they take debit and credit cards as well as other forms of payment. True. 25 cents. <clears throat> You're right. Leather shoes have come a long way since their introduction some 5,000 years ago. 
This is an example of one from that time period. It almost seems unbelievable that archaeologists were able to discover and dig up this preserved shoe from an Armenian cave. Back then, people were creating shoes to protect their feet just like today, but many used materials like bark and leaves. These shoes are certainly no Air Jordans of today, but they certainly were in their time. And then you stop and think about, um, what is it, the Dutch that make the clogs? Mm -hmm. And still make them. Yeah. It's like, there's, there's, there's a certain amount of, it, it works. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, I was, they used the material that was around them. Yeah. This retro shopping list made grocery shopping easier by using movable markers so the shopper could keep stock of everyday pantry items. This pocket-sized gadget made sure you wouldn't forget anything. Something like this could still be used today. Sure, there's probably an app, but would it have cake on it like this one? Actually, technically the app doesn't have anything on it. It's just they're, they're mostly just listing apps. Yeah, you just tell it. You just tell it exactly what you want. I do, I, I personally, I kind of like the idea of that in a sort of just, you know, retro kind of. The I thing is, see, we have too many products nowadays. And well, they yeah, did that but thing, I mean, I, so. could, I could see myself you know, having something like that just for the oddities. I, I am amused by A, the spelling of ketchup. I know, ketchup. I just noticed that. Um, the, the other one that really jumped out at me, not so much the cake, cake is just, you know, every list should have cake on it. Um, delicates. <laughs> Underneath cream, there's one called delicates. What were delicates? Answers on a postcard to, no wait, uh, answers in the comments down the line. The first belt buckles were exclusively worn by the wealthy to express one's status. This isn't something that is still practiced today, but we do see remnants of this when we look at the rodeo and fighting worlds. Whoever was wearing this belt buckle was of great importance. I wonder what prominent king was wearing this beautiful piece. That's probably solid gold too. Probably. <laughs> If you take a quick look at this device, I'm sure you can easily tell it is for food preparation. Mm -hmm. This six burner oven and stove combo also had a bread warmer. With all of that, it certainly sounds like it made cooking a breeze. Over the years, ovens have advanced, but you certainly can't get one like this anymore unless you buy it restored. If you look online, there's a few companies that do just that. Yeah, this was something that was essential for large families and gatherings in the past. I don't know why stoves stopped having like all the extra like ovens and stuff like that. It's like it just went down to your uh, four burners in your oven. That was it. Yeah, if uh, the higher I mean, end, I guess they figured people were, were. Well, the higher end you go, especially with today's digital ovens, um, they'll possibly have a bread proving drawer, for example. But, you know, a lot of times you can actually use the oven. It'll have like a bread proofing, things like that. Yeah, but, I mean, it, it'll well, have, yeah, you know, but that's expensive. Well, I mean, that was probably a yeah, was, everyday well, stove. <laughs> well, that one was. Uh, but no, the white one was probably, that was probably more of a high-end one, you know, with the yeah, six but, different ovens and know. six burners. That was kind of like, that was obviously, the, you know, that was a bit more high-end. I mean, I can honestly, see, I could see myself having one of those just because we're, we're getting back into the um, cool versus function thing. Yeah. It's functional and it I looks cool. A microwave. <laughs> <sighs> microwave and a hot plate. Yeah, maybe a hot plate. And a toaster oven. Long before Dungeons and Dragons became popular, ancient Romans were using this 20 sided die. This one is about 1800 years old and appears to have Greek symbols on each side. Were they nerding out over a game, gambling, or casting magic spells? <laughs> you may yes. never know the answer yeah. to that question, but it is fascinating to see an ancient game piece. The computer mouse has come a long way since it first came out in 1964. This is the first one, and it got its name because of the cord in the back, which looked like a mouse tail. <laughs> it was invented by Douglas Engelbart, and it was meant to be a wooden box with two rolling wheels attached to the bottom of it. His goal was to make an interactive device that would make computing easier. 
it certainly worked, and the rest is history. Gotta start somewhere. Any idea what this is? Yeah. A few of you may know, but this is an antique calculator. They used to look like typewriters rather than mathematical calculation devices. These calculators look nothing like the modern ones that we see today. Back then, they were actually known as comptometers, and they were the first key-driven mechanical calculators on the market. Got one behind the... Can't see it. Dink, dink, dink. Right there. Right there. Different brand, bit newer, but same well, concept. Now it has a... Uh, that, th this one has a print has a function. Yeah. yeah, it's got a print function. It's real high-tech. Works, too. Okay, it sticks, but... This toy was something that ancient Egyptian parents put in their children's graves so they would have something to play with in the afterlife. <laughs> About 4,500 years ago, it was common to see parents placing this homemade ball with their deceased children. It was created out of linen racks, and something like that would be creepy to most modern parents. Yeah, I was going to say it looked like their clothes. <laughs> what does that make to ball? Yeah, people say say it might be creepy but then a lot of people do um, put things in caskets yeah. with their loved ones so I mean, we put stuff on my sisters yeah this is the rib cage shower and it is probably however we didn't put a ball in there for her to play with probably <laughs> one of the more frightening <laughs> ones that yeah. you will ever see it was also referred to as the needle shower because it shot out jets around your torso. I know, that was These showers nice. were marketed towards men's athletic clubs and some even claimed to massage internal organs. After hearing that and seeing it, it sounds like some sort of torture device. I don't know. I'm, again, I'm kind of like torn. It's like I could, I could definitely see it. I mean. Well, you kind of have the same thing if you have, well, yeah, if you have all the multiple heads and stuff like that. If you're rich and you have all those different nozzles and stuff. Yeah. Then, then, at you. then again, how much water pressure do you need to actually drive something yeah, like that? That's true. I mean, that's that's a lot of jets. Back then, there probably wasn't that many people using water. <laughs> Back so. then, you had, well, in England especially, you'd have zip of water pressure as well. Because you know, pipes just couldn't take high pressure. Um. After looking at all these items, you can certainly see how things have evolved over the years. There's no telling how things will be in 10 years, much less another 100 or 1,000 years. I see public bathrooms no matter what, the world yeah. will constantly change and things we use today will someday seem archaic. I hope you enjoyed this little walk through old historical items. Thanks for watching. Hmm. And of course, as I said, some of them are kind of, you know, have simply evolved and come back, like the rabbit ears. Have, yeah. You know, as like I said, as most people kind of like start to get rid of the uh, expensive cable bills and stuff like that. It's like right. going going back to over the air stuff. It's kind of like yeah, antennas are making a comeback. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because you know, it probably all circles around somehow or the other so yeah and it all has to start somewhere and then you improve mm -hmm. on it and yeah well, so this shows you how much better you have it now than people before you did <laughs> so, true yeah that was interested um this was ready for history right yes. yeah i'm sure we're gonna I do so. <laughs> do uh, a lot more from him so if you want to see those make sure you hit that like and subscribe you can comment suggestions down below and hit the notification bell. That way you know when we do the suggestions that you commented down below. Yeah. And until next time, thanks for watching.